There has been recent controversies and case studies on why folks are moving towards monolith from microservices. There was a time when every application was getting moved from monolithic to a microservices based architecture and in the recent times there has been a conflict of interest and different case studies which proves that moving back to monolith is somewhat efficient for majority of the use cases. In this video we are going to break down and look at the timeline to see how microservices came into existence along with the tools and the frameworks around the whole ecosystem. I'm going to draw two parallels with timelines around architectural pattern and the tools and the frameworks around the same. In 2005, Dr. Peter Rogers, during a presentation at the Web Services Edge conference, introduced a term called micro web services. This was the first sighting when the whole microservices concept was just spoken about. In 2008, Docker was founded. However, there was no correlation in terms of building microservices and then containerizing them using Docker. These were two parallels which were getting built. In 2011, a bunch of software architects met for a workshop and in that particular workshop, they ended up using a term called microservice. Then they split down in their architecture into smaller chunks. In the same year, Adam Wiggins created something called a 12-factor application, which is the basis for building microservices and microservices-based application to deploy on the cloud. Adam Wiggins created these 12-factor principles when he was struggling to deploy an application to Heroku, a platform as a service which he created to run web services. In the same year, there was a competing product called Cloud Foundry, which was the first open source platform as a service, which was introduced in competition with Heroku. Both these platforms were platform as a service and you can deploy an application or a web service and let the platform manage the infrastructure under the hood. There was also a framework which got developed in the same year called Vertex or Node.x. Initially, it was called as Node.x. Later, it got transitioned into Vertex. This is one another popular microservices framework, which is leveraged for building microservices based architecture with various interoperable languages. In the next year, in 2012, that's when the same group of architects who met during the workshop came up together and then coined the term called microservices. This is the first sighting of the term microservices when they agreed upon splitting a monolithic architecture into smaller services and managing them independently. In the same year, James Lewis, who is now the architect in ThoughtWorks, presented a case study on microservices Java, the Unix way. On the similar lines, Fred George, who is another renowned technologist, he also presented using the term microservices in one of his presentations in a conference. This created a stir in the industry and the word microservices became popular. And almost at the same time, Netflix was heavily moving towards AWS and Adrian Cockcroft, who was the director of engineering at Netflix at that particular time, described this as a fine-grained service-oriented architecture. SOAs were the pre-version of microservices, which were called a service-oriented architecture, and he called microservices as fine-grained SOAs. This is how the architectural pattern of microservices evolved. And after that, people started building patterns using microservices to scale them much better. Looking at the tools which got developed after that, in 2014, Spring Boot got founded and people started heavily containerizing the application ever since then. In 2015, Kubernetes was created, which is now the de facto platform for moving containerized workloads. In 2016, MicroProfile, another profound framework was created for building microservices based application. In 2017, Oracle launched Heli In 2018, Micronaut was created by the initial founders of Spring Boot to create a more faster and lightweight microservices framework for the industry. Finally, in 2019, Red Hat created something called a Squarkus, which is another microservices based framework. Of course, there are a lot of other frameworks which have been built but I have just listed down the most popular ones. If you're new to microservices, this would summarize the complete microservices journey and how the tools and the frameworks align with the same timeline when microservices evolved. I would like to conclude by highlighting some of the quotes from some of the renowned engineers who created microservices and who contributed heavily to the space. Sam Newman, who wrote one of the first initial books on design microservices under O'Reilly, said that 
if you're working in an organization that places lot of restrictions on how developers can do their work then microservices may not be for you this statement may not sound intense but if you look at the restrictions and the processes which we have in some of our day to day work might show why microservices may not be the right way for us simon brown is another technologist who is very popular in the architecture space he said that if you can't build a monolith what makes you think microservices are the answer there is also a funny uh, architect clippy which says that i see you have a poorly structured monolith would you like me to convert it into a poorly structured set of microservices before even the term microservices was coined grady booch said that all architecture is design but not all design is architecture architecture represents the significant design decisions that shape a system where the significance is measured by cost of change finally i would end the video with a quote from one of my favorite speakers dr venkat subramaniam he says that we cannot travel the roads of success without ever crossing the streets of failure whenever you are choosing a tool or a design understand the pros and cons of those and take a wise decision on why a particular tech stack has been chosen i hope you found this particular video interesting as always if you like the video go and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much